All right, well, let's get, let's get started here. Uh, thank you guys in Orange for being here with us this year. It's fantastic to have you here. I've heard you had uh, over 650 people to the event here this year. I'm Senator Tom O'Mara, myself and Assemblyman Phil Pomisano uh, have led this charge for several years with all of our colleagues uh, that are here. We want to thank you so much for coming here and helping us do our jobs for you. Your presence here uh, means a lot in helping us get our job done in the budget, which we'll be doing over the next couple weeks, working to get our fair share of funding for our local roads and bridges, because our local roads matter. Your presence here uh, exemplifies that. Uh, the press conferences that myself and other members have done around the state uh, have helped lead up to this day here uh, today. I'm a little hoarse today, so I'm not going to talk uh, uh, too much. Uh, I'll introduce Phil Pomisano here in a second, but I want to recognize our senators that are here. Senator Robach, the uh, chair of the Transportation Committee in the Senate. Senator Kathy Marchione, Senator Sue Serino, Senator Mike Ranzenhofer, Senator Fred Akshar, Senator Gallivan, Senator Ort, Senator Funky, Senator Amador, Senator Croce, Senator Ritchie, Senator Seward, Senator Bonasek, Senator Tim Kennedy, and I think that's all of our senators. So here with, uh, for the assembly is uh, Phil Pomisano, and we'll have a few speakers. Well, thank, thank you all for coming, and uh, uh, we appreciate this. Uh, this is the fourth year of doing this, and we've had some success over the past four years, but we need to do better. Uh, before I start, I want to introduce some of my assembly colleagues, uh, Assemblywoman Aileen Gunther, Assemblyman Jim Tedesco, Assemblyman Mark Butler, Assemblyman Mark Johns, Assemblyman Bob Oaks, Assemblyman Peter Lawrence, and I hope I'm, oh, Assemblyman Pete Lopez, and I know I'm, if I'm missing anyone, Assemblyman Joe Giglio. Uh, th this is a, a bipartisan effort that's grown, and I just want to thank all the groups. We're here, we have representatives, and you'll hear some from some from the New York State County Highway Superintendents, the town. New York State Town Highway Superintendents, the New York State Association of Counties, New York State Conference of Mayors, the Association of Towns, the New York State Farm Bureau, uh, Associated General Contractors, and Rebuild New York Now have all been a part of supporting this effort uh, that we're proposing and, and leading here today. Uh, and I said this has been a four-year effort. We have 130 signatures on this letter that's going to the governor and legislative leaders. 91 members in the Assembly, 39 members in the Senate, uh, bipartisan effort on both sides. And, uh, and we can't do it without that support. And certainly, the, the, the orange you see behind us, uh, to the, the men and women who are here uh, representing towns and villages and cities across the state, we thank you for what you do. Uh, we come with three specific asks uh, with this letter and this proposal we're asking to the governor. Number one, we're asking for parity between the MTA and the DOT capital plan that has always been done. That this has been, it has always been the history of this legislature and governor's past. Since 2010, the MTA and DOT capital budget have been equal. That did not happen in 2010 and is not proposed to happen this year. We need to make sure that does happen, and that's one of our top priorities. Uh, the, other the other important priority, something we've talked about for the past several years, is funding our local infrastructure, our CHIPS program. We're asking for a $250 million increase in the CHIPS program. To restore the $50 million that the governor cut as part of the winter recovery program, and a $200 million increase uh, to propose uh, to increase funding for our local roads and bridges, and a four-year state aid to local bridge and culvert program uh, that has local control uh, with this decision-making process. Uh, people might ask where this money is going to come from. We collect nearly drivers, drivers uh, pay nearly $5 billion in taxes, fees, and assessments, but yet only about $2 billion of that is going into the dedicated fund and used on infrastructure. We have over $2 billion still left in settlement funds that can be used to disperse. And the governor gets it. He has a little bit of, he has in his budget $1 billion for paved New York. Half of that's assigned for local roads. We believe that should go into the CHIPS program because that would go right to the local communities that would help reduce local property taxes and a $1 billion bridge New York program. So we want to use that money for that. So I'm going to give it back to Senator O'Meara. I know there's a couple of Senate colleagues who want to speak because I know they have a meeting, and then I'll come back and introduce some of our other colleagues and people from the organizations that are here, and then I'll, uh, we'll wrap it up with some more specific details that are very important in this and why this, we believe this money is justified. Senator? Yep. Thank you, Phil. Uh, next up, we'll have uh, Senator Joe Robach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Good morning. Let me thank all my colleagues for being here. This is not new. You know it. I want to thank you. We've had press conferences 
all across the state to highlight this issue. Uh, there's been consortiums of people, and we're moving the needle in the right direction. This is about equity, need, fairness, not only roads and bridges, but economic development all across the state, but especially in upstate New York. And I want to let you know your work has made a difference. I could not be happier with the Senate version of the budget, which we're printing right now. We're going to vote on our version of the budget on Monday. In that budget, there will be parity with the MTA for upstate roads and bridges, and we're going to hold our line on that. There's a, there's a lot of things we could talk about, but I just want to mention one which many of you have spoke to me about. As Tom O'Mara, Phil Palmisano, and all my colleagues have talked about, we're not only going to add the chips, but when you take the a PAVE program, which is another billion dollars, and run that through the chips formula, that's going to give you local autonomy and more money in your local bridge and road programs. We want to make sure that happens in the budget. This is the one chance we're going to have in five years, and I'm very happy to say that the Republican Senate has put their money where their mouth is, and in our budget, we're going to do what you wanted. We heard you, we listened, and now we've got to make sure it stays in the final budget. Thank you. And I, I just want to emphasize, this is, this is not an upstate downstate thing. The New York State DOT capital plan affects everyone. It affects everyone. So we just want to make sure, and, and again, we have bipartisan support. And I'm pleased that someone, Aileen Guthrie, is here. Uh, thank you for being here. We'd love you to see, say a few words. We're trying to, trying to make this a bipartisan thing, and, we've, and, we, and it's shown with the number of signatures and people who signed our letter. Thank you, Aileen. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank each one and each and every one in Orange for keeping our roads in upstate New York safe and passable through the winter, through the worst storms. We're so grateful for what you do. And this is a bipartisan effort. We must make sure that the infrastructure in upstate New York is safe for our constituency, and also it is economic development. And we see that all those uh, advertisements for I love you, New York. And in order for us all to I love New York, we need those roads and bridges to be able for people to travel from all over the country. And so thank you for what you do, and certainly I'll be fighting hard for all of you in Albany this year. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Eileen. Uh, next, uh, from the Senate, we have uh, one of our local senators, Kathy Marchione. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to uh, thank Assemblyman. Um, I'd like to thank the Senator and the Assemblyman who will host this event. This is really an important event. And you see all these orange shirts behind us. Without them being here, this effort wouldn't be moving forward like it's moving forward. As you've heard earlier, we have listened. We have heard you. You know, this morning I started with donuts and coffee in my office and had, I would say, 150 of the orange shirts in my office. I do that because I want to say thank you. I do that because I want them to know how important I believe they are. They're important to the safety and our school buses and our children. They're important to the economy and being able to have commerce travel. They're important to every aspect of being open for business. I heard someone say the other day, if our roads are closed, we're not open for business. And that is absolutely positively right. I want to say thank you to the Senate for what they've been doing moving forward. You know, as the local government chair for the Senate, it was very interesting, and I actually said this to our governor, who I want to say thank you to this morning for putting a billion dollars in for bridges and a billion dollars in for roads. Now we just need the CHIPS formula in order to be able to spend those monies fairly. But you know, it's a, such, an, such an important issue to each and every one of us that we can get in our cars and we can, and we can move forward and we can go to work and we can do what we need to do. And we sometimes forget that those infrastructure dollars are the most important dollars that we have to keep us safe and to keep our commerce moving. I want to thank my Republican colleagues in, in our One House budget going forward. It's very important that we keep moving this forward. It's very important that the orange shirts that are here don't stop today. Keep moving forward. Keep pushing because your efforts do matter. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Senator. And before we go to some of our list of our stakeholders, I, I did want to invite uh, someone with Jim Tedesco, who's an Albany uh, Capital Region legislator. Maybe we want to say a few words on behalf of yourself and the Albany region. Thank you. 
comfortable yeah. in front of the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me say this, uh, it is about economic development, it's about safety, it's about fiscal uh, protection for our local municipalities. But I want to say this, the strength and how strong New York State is, is not based on top down, what governors do, what senators do, what assembly people do. We do a lot of important things here and we're certainly going to fight for a lot of money. But the strength of this state is built from the ground, the foundation up. We love our supervisors. We love our council members, the trustees from Saratoga County, Schenectady County, the capital region here, great elected officials. But they don't get to work to do their job. Our constituents don't take their kids to the doctors. They don't get to their schools. We don't create those commercial developments and those developments for housing unless one public servant gets to work and does the job you do. And that's our highway supervisors. Thank you for the job you do, the number one public servant in New York State. You are the backbone of our municipalities and of this state. We build from you up to the top, and you keep us strong. Keep up the great work, and we will keep fighting for you. Thank you for the work that uh, uh, the Assemblyman does, the Senators do on, on our behalf. They lead us here. We follow them. But truly, we follow you. Keep us uh, in contact with us. Continue to let us know what you need, and we will fight for you like you fight for the constituents that you serve. Thank you so much for having us. At this point in time, I'd like to introduce uh, Jeff Griswold. He's the president of New York State Association of Town Highway Superintendents. Jeff? Good morning. I'm Jeff Griswold, the Town Highway Superintendent for the Town of Preble in Cortland County and the president of the New York State Association of Town Highway Superintendents, which is the state's largest transportation association. We represent highway superintendents in 932 towns. And I'm not convinced most of them aren't here. <laughs> they are responsible for local highways and bridges. Thank you, Senator O'Mara and Assemblyman Palmasano and all your colleagues for your leadership and continued support of our transportation infrastructure. Local roads matter. I'd also like to thank the over 650, actually 700, local highway officials and vendor partners for making the trip to Albany and to make the case for an increased funding for our local roads, culverts, and bridges. 87% of the roads and half of the bridges in the state are owned by local governments. The massive system is in bad shape and it drastically needs rehabilitation and reconstruction which cannot be accomplished without additional funding. Having a five-year highway and bridge capital program that truly meets the needs of our state's residents is our top priority. The recently released executive budget proposes a $26.1 billion MTA five-year capital plan and a DOT five-year plan funded at $20.1 billion. It is essential that both capital programs are equally funded at $26.1 billion, and that a significant portion of the resulting additional funding be allocated directly to local highway departments throughout the state. A safe and efficient infrastructure is necessary for the traveling public and our economy. That means equal funding for our road, bridge, and transit systems statewide. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jeff. Uh, uh, as you see, some of our members may be dropping off. We have conference going on upstairs with some uh, briefings on other parts of the budget uh, right now. But uh, I do want to um, express my uh, gratitude for the media showing up and helping us get this message out there. So thank you for being part of this with us. Next up, uh, we're going to have Tracy Eldridge, president of the New York State County Highway Superintendents Association. As the Senator said, uh, Tracy Eldridge, um, Hamilton County Highway Superintendent, also the President of the New York State County Highway Superintendents Association. I want to thank the Senator and the Assembly for this meeting. It's very important. Um, as Jeff said, he gave you a lot of, um, of the numbers of the 
what the local system is in the state. But truly, we need parity with the MTA capital program. It is important. It's not a downstate, upstate thing. This is the whole infrastructure of the state of New York, outside New York City, that matters. Every citizen of the state of New York depends on our bridges and roads to be safe every day, no matter what their business is. It is an economic driver. We're just asking for the correct funding so that we can give those citizens what they deserve, period. Um, again, thank you, for, thank you all for coming. It's a great turnout, and we very much appreciate your support. Um, I'd just like to make one quick announcement. I'm sorry. I got a note uh, that a Mark Talbert left his medical card at the entrance of whatever entrance he came in, so you should be able to pick that up, Mark. So if anybody sees Mark or knows Mark, let them know. Again, yeah, it could be. So again, thank you all. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce Mark Levine from the New York State Association of Counties. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of the NISAC President, Bill Cherry, and all of our member counties, I would like to thank all of the state assembly members and senators who are here with us today. Your support for local government does not go unnoticed. We appreciate everything you do. Thank you. We also want to thank the town and county and local highway superintendents that are here with us today. You are the backbone of our state. Thank you very much. The work that you do each and every day is so critical to every part of our lives. We are at a critical crossroads when it comes to funding transportation on our state. Counties and local governments are living in a property tax cap world. We have a revenue problem. We have a revenue issue. We are seeing declines in our sales tax receipts across the state. At the same time, the crossroads is we have roads and bridges that are in serious disrepair. We do not have the means at this point to fix all of the th roads and bridges that need to be fixed in our state. That's why we're here today. We need state support and we appreciate the state support. We would like a serious investment in local transportation, upstate transportation in this year's state budget. We would like the, the uh, bank settlement funds to be targeted to upstate road and bridge infrastructure needs in New York State, and we appreciate your support for that. Thank you very much. And thank you again for everyone coming to Albany today. This is the best way to have our voices heard in Albany, in this great capital. Thank you. You know, this, this truly is the best way, you know. We have uh, on our lobby days up here on Tuesdays and Wednesdays uh, in Albany, week after week, busload after busload of advocates coming up from New York City. Very seldom do we see that from across upstate New York and the numbers that we have here today and the presence that you make. And that makes a huge difference and it helps us do our jobs. Next up from the New York Conference of uh, Mayors, Wade Beltramo. Did I say that right? <laughs> Good morning. My name is Wade Beltramo. I'm general counsel for the New York State Conference of Mayors. Um, I do, I want to echo uh, Mark's sentiments um, briefly and thank the bipartisan representation here today. I think the fact that this is such a substantial bipartisan representation um, lends itself to the saying that we have is that there's no Republican way, there's no Democratic way to fix a road or plow a road or build a bridge or maintain a bridge. Um, it's, it's just good government and it's good public policy and we want to stress that today. That New York's infrastructure, its transportation infrastructure, is a partnership between the state and local governments. It's a partnership of maintenance and work, and it needs to be a partnership of financing as well. In this tax cap era, and we know that the tax cap is extremely popular, um, but if you're going to limit the revenue that can be raised as a result of the tax cap, You've got to limit the costs or you've got to find another way to supplement the revenue to provide for the infrastructure that is critical for our economies. Nobody here today got here without traveling on a municipally maintained road. 
Our schools transport their children via buses on municipally maintained roads. Businesses get their goods to their stores on municipally maintained roads. And without a good infrastructure, we are not going to attract businesses, we are not going to attract jobs, and we're not going to keep the jobs and businesses that we have if we don't keep our infrastructure uh, up to snuff. Um, it's not a sexy topic. It doesn't get a lot of the press that other people, uh, other topics get. Um, but it's, it's crucial. And again, I want to thank the bipartisan representation. And I think, I'm assuming it's a, a fan of Syracuse, maybe, who organized the color of the shirts today. Um, but I do want to thank, again, the, the unsung heroes who, when we're all uh, sleeping in beds there uh, at night during the winter, they're plowing the road. So thank you again for the support. We greatly appreciate this. If we are going to continue as an economic powerhouse and revitalize, we need to be mindful of our, our basic infrastructure. So thank you again, and uh, uh, I want to just uh, to, to thank everybody for their support. Uh, b before I introduce our next speaker, I, I was remiss. Uh, we have a former colleague who was in the assembly with me, Dan Lesquadro, who's now a town highway superintendent down in Long Island. So Dan, it's good to see you here. Thank you for being here. Um, our, uh, our next speaker is Jeff Williams from the New York State Farm Bureau. Jeff? First of, all, uh, first of all, I want to thank everyone here in orange shirts for being here today to drive this critical message home. And I want to thank all of our legislative partners here for hearing that message and acting in our favor. We're talking about a safe and strong road and bridge economy infrastructure, but we're also talking about a strong economy. Farms across the state anchor local communities and the businesses that live in those communities. Whether it's a milk truck that can't get to a dairy farm to, to pick up a shipment, or a farmer who can't get their tractor across the Erie Canal because of road restrictions or a bridge weight restrictions, our economy suffers. If we, need, if we have parity, in funding, if we have CHIPS funding increases, we can have a strong road and bridge infrastructure, a strong farm economy, in a strong New York State. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jeff, for being here in support of this. Uh, next, uh, uh, Senator Tim Kennedy uh, from the Democratic Conference in the Senate and from Buffalo, New York, would like to say a couple words when Gary Finch gets out of the way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody this morning? Thank you for coming down. How about a hand for the leaders in the Senate and the Assembly for putting this event together today? I, I want to take the opportunity. I represent Western New York, Buffalo, Lackawanna, Cheektowaga. I want to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you that came in from Western New York, from upstate, we want to ensure that our voices are heard in this upcoming budget. And I can tell you very clearly in the priority letter that we sent, both to the Senate leadership as well as to the governor's office as it pertains to democratic priorities, we want to ensure that there's parity between upstate and downstate in this, in this budget when it pertains to our roads and bridges. There should be no $4 billion gap in this budget. We're talking about thousands of jobs for our communities. We're talking about millions of dollars for our roads and our bridges and our infrastructure. And we have to ensure that there's parity. And then when we get that parity, we have to make sure that those millions of dollars flow right into the municipal governments in the form of new CHIP funds to make sure that you're able to do your jobs, do it effectively, and give the taxpayers in each of our communities the roads, the bridges, the infrastructure, the quality of life, the jobs and the economy that goes with that, that every single one of them deserves. Thanks for coming out here tonight. And I got to tell you, Tommy O'Mara and I, as two uh, Irishmen looking at a sea of orange, if you were coming down, down the street in our neighborhood, a riot would break out, I think. <laughs> Next year, let's make it lime green around St. Patty's Day. How about that? Right. <laughs> um, we're, we're almost done. I just want to remind everyone, we're gonna, we, we forgot to announce, we're going to take a picture on the staircase with the banner afterwards, so please don't leave before we do that. Um, we're just about wrapping it up here. I really appreciate all your patience, the media's patience for being here. want to reiterate some important points why we just 
need to, to this is so important. Uh, and it's in the letter, it's in the press release, but I just want to reiterate because it's so important. Uh, number one, we believe the money is in the budget to do this. We've talked about it uh, between the proposal the governor's already made. We can work within the context of that budget to make sure that money goes to our local infrastructure because local roads matter. Let me tell you why we're pressing so much on chips and local highway funding. 87% of the roads are owned and maintained by our local municipalities. 52% of the bridges are owned and maintained by our municipalities. 48% of the miles driven are driven on our local roads. The state comptroller came out with a report a couple years ago and said that 32% of our bridges are deficient. 40% of our roads are fair or poor are getting worse. And there was $89 billion in unmet needs. The town highway superintendents did a study back in 2013 saying we need $1.3 billion annually just to keep up with, with our regular maintenance costs. Uh, when the MTA announcement was made, they said the MTA is the lifeblood of downstate, and I'm not disputing that, but for our local rural communities across the state, uh, particularly upstate, CHIPS is the lifeline of these uh, rural communities because sometimes that's the only money they have to fix their local infrastructure. With the property tax cap, and, and, and it, this is very vital, every dollar you invest in CHIPS is one less dollar from the local property taxpayer. Every dollar you invest in CHIPS is another dollar in mandate relief. Every dollar you invest in chips is saved six to fourteen dollars in long-term rehabilitation costs. And whoever says investing in chips isn't about economic development, when you invest in chips, the money goes to the local highway departments. They hire local contractors who hire local employees. Our tourism, there's a lot of big push on tourism. What message are we sending to people coming across the state when they get in our local communities and the local roads and bridges are a mess? And if you want to talk about issues that draw a lot of attention, I know education gets that, but think about safety. How many of us put our kids and grandkids on a school bus every morning and go over a local road or bridge? God forbid one of those bridges go out. Then what are we going to do? We cannot be reactive to this anymore. This is too much of a crisis waiting to happen. We have to be proactive. We have the resources to do it within the context of this budget. We just have to show the commitment. Our first responders going to a, uh, an emergency, uh, they have to go over these local bridges. If they're out, if there's a road out or a bridge out, that's a problem. And Tripp did a study that says it costs New York drivers annually $25 billion, that's $2,300 per driver in annual maintenance vehicle costs and the like. So we believe we have the right message. We believe we have a tremendous amount of support, bipartisan support in the Assembly and Senate, and we're going to keep pushing this through uh, into the final budget negotiations because, quite frankly, it's the right thing to do. So we thank you all for coming out here, and I'm going to let, give it to my Senator Tom O'Meara to close out, but thank you to the media for being here to cover this. Thank you to my colleagues in the Senate and Assembly for being here and your support. Our, our stakeholders, and of course, the Sea of Orange. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for what you do in our, rural, our communities across this state. And thank you for being here to speak up for Local Roads Matter because it's the right thing to do. Thank you, everyone. Tom? Well, thanks again. I can't say it any better than uh, Phil just said it. I want to thank you all for your participation in this event. Thank you for the lovely T-shirts every year. My wife loves it when I bring a different one home every year. Uh, thank you for the potato chips, which we all love, and thank you for being here to keep the momentum going on the local roads matter. It's a critical time of the year with our budget. We're going to get this done. Thank you for being a part of it.